All right, today I am going to do a step-by-step -step formatting a big band chart. So I got this chart. It is done, ready to have it read. What do I need to do to get parts into the band's hands? <laughs> First thing, this is one I've forgotten and it's really embarrassing. So you're gonna put rehearsal marks. So to do that, go to text, and then this B1 right here, you gotta click that. First highlight the spot that you want it, you know. I think right here is a good spot for the first one. Just throw it there. And first it's gonna do a letter. Now I'm not really a letters guy, I kinda like numbers. So here's what you do. That's measure five, put a five. And then, funny thing, if you put in the right number, every number you put in after that, is gonna be right. You don't even have to type it, it'll just figure it out for you. So I'm gonna go right there, and then just double click that. Measure 16, all right, great. I'm gonna go through and put the rest of these in. All right, now that we got all of our rehearsal markings in, what we're gonna do is um, format our pages on our score. And before that, uh, let's not miss this little crucial step. We're going to change from concert pitch, which uh, a lot of people, uh, I work in concert pitch, a little easier for me. There you go. Unclick that little check mark. That's going to put your score in transposed, which you always want your score in transposed. Some people don't do it in transposed, but it's kind of the standard. So now we're going to go from continuous view to page view. Uh, it gives us a little front page here. I'm just going to leave that. That's fine. Whatever. Now, I'm kind of a vertical kind of guy, but I'll show you how to go into landscape if you want. You need to go format to page settings, and then right here, you can go from portrait to landscape. Easy enough. That's, that's all you do. I'm keeping it in portrait, because I like portrait. So now, what we want to do is format our pages to um, look decent. So we're gonna put some page breaks. So first, I'll put one right here because that looks bad. That's hard to read and it has a page turn for the director right in the middle of that. Instead, we just make this whole page the drum intro. And that's fine, it's not the most efficient, but it's, it makes it a lot easier for them to read and follow the score. Now, um, pretty good rule of thumb which is what I'm gonna do here is just control A to select everything then I'm gonna go to format and add remove system breaks I'm just gonna put a system break every four measures and then go in and fix it where it doesn't really work so I think for the most part particularly on this score that's gonna work out just fine so let's see where does it not okay something muse score kinda messes up on is when you have instruments change, it uh, messes up their clefs. So you see it goes from clarinet to tenor saxophone here, and it does this like treble clef with an octave displacement, and then it writes all that stuff like way up there. And that's just not what we're going for. So just delete that, and it fixes it. Easy enough. Let's just keep scrolling along, see if there's anything we really want to fix. Uh, that could look better. Let's go ahead and page break there. Um, and then we gotta remove this page break. And then you know, you got three measures on a page and that's not ideal. But, we're gonna, we're doing what we can here. Okay, I actually wanna fix this cause I'm not happy with that phrasing. I think that works better. So... Okay. 
All right, now that we got our pages looking decent, what we're gonna do is go to parts. Then you're gonna hit open all. And you're gonna pray your computer doesn't crash. <laughs> Look at that. We made it to the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and save real quick. So, good time to do that. You know, I like leaving the little text that says subtitle. I think it's pretty hip. Oh, look at that, it fixed itself. But if you want to delete it, just select it and hit delete. There you go. I want to leave it though, so I'm putting it back on. Now, you got your parts. What are you, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna make these parts look good? Well, you're gonna go through a similar process as with the score of making system breaks, except it's not gonna be by page. Instead, you're just gonna break systems to make things look decent and also make it not like a ton of pages. So, if I'm gonna work on this flute part, looks like I'm probably gonna have four pages here because uh, I think I'm only gonna make it bigger. So there's a four page part. Okay. And throw a break there, throw a break there, throw in there. That looks good. I'm just going to make sure it stays. Here's something beam properties, uh, another little part of making your parts look good. Uh, I don't like this because it looks like a triplet. And as this is not a big deal, like you can leave these, but if you want to fix it and do it right, you can just click the note, go to beam properties. If you need to add that palette, just click add palettes and find beam properties. I always keep that one ready. And then just click that note. The little, uh, it's titled no beam. The easier your chart is to read, the better people are gonna play it. Oh, but here's another little spot. Just go ahead and fix that. You know, it's just good to do things right, you know. We're looking pretty good. So. You know, once I finish this, I only have to do it 17 more times, I think. So, here I have my part formatted with system breaks. Looks good. All that's easy to read. You have that part in front of you. Life's good. Except, some of the accidentals are pretty bunk. So, I'm just gonna, you know, give it a little once through and look for any of the weird ones. That all looks fine. That's cool. You know, look for spots where it's like, oh, we got, yeah, this is hard to read. G, F, D sharp, D natural, E flat. You know, you wanna avoid having flats and sharps in one key, or I mean line, sorry. You want to avoid having sharps and flats in the same line. But it's not that bad. Like, that implies, like, you know, that's not the worst thing to read. E flat to F sharp. Like, whatever. That, that'll read easier as an A flat. That is a G flat. So then it's, like, chromatic approaches from above. Yeah, that's that's so when you got these two long notes, you got an A sharp and then an A later. Somebody can misread that. Make it a B flat, they won't. Um, oh, missed another one. Let's go ahead and fix those. Just fix them. Okay, here's a spot. We got an E sharp. Don't do that. Just, so once you start getting the transpose stuff, that's where you see the real bad ones. So. We got C sharp to E sharp. Just select all those notes, hit J, then it fixes it, usually, not always. Uh, e flat to G, E flat to G sharp, we don't want that. A flat, that makes more sense. F sharp to A sharp, that's good enough. We'll leave it, doesn't matter that much. A f e flat though, that should be going to it. A flat. Mm, that'll be better as a G flat. G flat. Just make that a. All right. So sometimes you get a part that kind of looks like garbage in terms of sharps and flats. 
this part has a ton of sharps and I think it would be better to just have a little reset than to go through and fix each pitch so what I'm going to do is select the whole thing transpose it up a half step just up arrow pray my computer doesn't crash alright did it then down arrow bring it back down half step and then now I'm still gonna have to go through and fix some things B to G flat that's I mean sorry <laughs> E flat not great so we'll do that uh, this line could be sharps so I'm just gonna go down and then up now make it sharps killing right and then that that's about as good as it's gonna get that let's go ahead and make those sharps you know just that's good enough go ahead with that you know just find the like really bad spots I'm gonna make that a sharp that's not that bad though <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be better as G sharp. Yeah, you know, all flats in a line is good to see. If you see spots where it's like jumping around a lot weird, like that's kind of a, I should fix that. This is pretty much the same thing as earlier. So we're going to go down and then up. Makes it sharps. You know, remember who you're writing for too. This is a saxophone part. Saxophones don't mind sharps typically, but like a super flatty line is, you know, if you're writing for trombones, stick to flats. They like flats more than sharps. Typically, case by case basis, know your players, get to know people, ask them. See E flat, I like that. E flat, G flat, good enough, good enough that well uh, let's do that I like that more that looks pretty good yeah really ch just changing it all to flats did a lot usually if you see double sharps on the part it's gonna be better for you to just transpose it up a half step then back down and it'll be flats all right yeah that's how you make the part look all right. And then this one, obviously, I haven't gone through and fixed my system brakes, so I go through and do that. And this you gotta do on every part, and it's gonna take you like an hour, and just go through and do it. And your band's gonna read your chart better. Do the formatting, please. It's worth it. All right, last tip I would have is um, when you get to a solo section, make sure to put system breaks every four bars for the soloist or else it's really hard to read. 